My name is Sarah Woodbury. I'm here with my husband Dan today to talk about Richmond Castle. Richmond Castle was initially called Richmount, which means strong hill. Uh, it was built above the River Swale in northern Yorkshire and has a hundred foot sandstone keep. Mm, everyone loves a hundred foot keep. They sure do. But uh, why are we talking about Richmond now? Okay, so to be honest, we're talking about it as a foil for talking about conquest and particularly the different kinds of conquest of Britain. I find it helpful to think about the conquest as three types. The first is when a peoples come to England, in this case, and take over the country, either by assimilating the people who are there or displacing them. But the upshot is that the language and culture in the country is of the conquering peoples. And that's what happened with both the Celts and the Saxons when they came to Britain. The second kind is the conquering peoples come, they take over for a while, but then after the people they conquered overthrow them and the leaders are killed or leave, the, peop the common people stay and then are assimilated into the people that they had initially conquered. And that's the situation that happened with the Danes in England. Then there's the third kind where the conquering peoples come and they take over, but they rule from the top, so to speak. And in this case, that's what happened with the Romans and the Normans, where they had a full administrative structure, but underneath, the people had continued along in their culture and language, mostly as before. So William the Conqueror was an example of this latter kind. When he came, he brought his army and his nobles and began taking over England. He was crowned king in 1066, and then began spreading out. The Saxon noblemen, those that survived, had bowed to him, but that did not mean that the common people were on board with their new king. So he had to take the country by force. Richmond Castle is an example of how he did that, the mechanism by which he did that. In 1069, the north of England rose in rebellion, and William put that rebellion down very harshly. It's called the harrying of the north. Some have even termed it as ethnic cleansing. Whole villages and towns were wiped out in order to eliminate this rebellion. In the aftermath, William gave Northern Yorkshire, well, it's actually eight counties, to Alan Rufus, who was the Duke of Brittany. Made him the Earl of Richmond and said, extract what you can from these people but control them. And that is what he did, and that was the purpose of Richmond Castle. It started out as a Mott and Bailey castle, but then over the years morphed into this massive construction that you see today. This mechanism of giving land to vassals and then telling them to control the land and give him wealth mm -hmm. that came out of it was very successful. It took maybe only four or five years for William to subdue the whole country. After that, however, he turned his attention to Wales, which was actually a little bit more difficult to conquer, and we will talk about why next week. If you like this video, click on the playlist or subscribe to my channel. There will be a new video next week. And if you want to check out my books, click on the link to my webpage.